one. Okay, so for background. I'm 20 now and I still work here. Not currently, because COVID. But I'm still really curious to know what you guys think. I tell this story to anyone who will listen. I've had a few encounters, but the first and last one I mention are the worst, so if you want, skip to those. I started working at this gym in the daycare when I was about 17. I had a few weird encounters that led me to believe it was haunted. This one specifically stuck with me. When I first started, I was only working weekend mornings from 10 to 2 p.m. It was pretty dead during that time, so we only had a few workers in the building. Me, a front desk worker and a maintenance worker. When there were no kids, I would clean the locker rooms and the daycare in my spare time. I was only my third shift working, and I was wiping down the toys in the daycare on a Saturday. And the walkie-talkie all the workers had started making static noise. I talked back in the walkie, and a little girl answered back. It was so staticky, I could barely hear what she was saying, but I heard laughing, and vaguely heard her say things in a playful voice that I couldn't make out. I want to say that she said things like, Come find me. But honestly, I can't be sure. I definitely remember her laughing, though. I got really creeped out and went to find my co-workers. Turns out we had all heard the same thing. Everyone played this off like it was a different frequency or something like that. I don't know, but I brushed it off. But here's the thing. She started to get on the walkie every Saturday around the same time early in the morning. Saying the same things over and over. Laughing with a lot of static. I'd always answer back like, who's this? Where are you? This happened for a few weeks every Saturday. Until this kind of slow guy I was working with that morning got on the walkie and yelled at the little girl to stop talking to us. And suddenly I never heard it or the walkie again. That's not the last of it, though. I was really creeped out and this stuck with me for months. I told every one of my co-workers who would listen. None of them thought it was a ghost. I started working the front desk as well as daycare a few months later, and I told the owner's sister my story when she came in. She's really into paranormal stuff, too, and swears she thinks the building's haunted, too. She said one time when she was in the women's locker room coming out of the sauna, she heard a girl humming near the hot tub. The hot tub area has been closed since we took over the building. It was a rec center before that. She also said she got a really unsettling feeling whenever she was in there. I could relate. I always felt really weird when I cleaned in there. And when I told the maintenance guys again, literally told anyone who would listen, they said they always felt a bad vibe in there too. Little things were happening around that time. For example, we had this little boy who always came to daycare named Tristan, who would constantly seem to be looking at someone and talking gibberish to them. He's about five years old. I started to notice it and even took a video once because he was creeping me out. Maybe I'll blank out his face and post it if you guys want to see it. It's not my child, so I don't want to go posting his face. Me and the other daycare lady had been watching him for about a year at this point, and she said he'd been doing it around her too. We asked him who he was talking to once while we switched shifts, and he brushed it off like he wasn't talking to anyone. Could have easily been an imaginary friend, but it was still creepy. Especially for his age to be talking gibberish. Note that this always only took place in our daycare. Remember that for my last and most horrifying encounter, that makes me absolutely believe the building's haunted. So anyways, eventually I stopped working daycare and started working front desk full time. I worked in the morning when it was dead AF. One time I thought I'd lost the little key that we used to refill the toilet paper in the bathroom. I looked everywhere for it. For days. Now this was around the same time the creepiest thing happened to me and one of my bossy's little girls. It gets confusing, and I know this is long, but trust me, this part is absolutely crazy. So as I said, I wasn't working daycare anymore, but I absolutely adored my boss's little daughter, and she loved me too, from when I used to watch her. Sometimes when I worked a double, they'd stick me back in the daycare when she was there because she didn't like anyone else but me. Daycare usually ended at 8 on weeknights, so the other daycare girl had gone home but I wasn't off until 9 and my boss wasn't going to be done with his basketball camp until 9. 
Anyways, so I watched his daughter in the daycare room till he finished. There was this Maui doll. You know, that big guy from Moana in the daycare room that was huge and sung. I got a bad vibe from it, but his daughter absolutely hated it. It scared her so bad she would cry any time she came near it. I ended up hiding it in this little corner so she couldn't see it anymore and would stop crying. So hear me out with this part. The daycare room is split into two rooms. One room is where you enter and where the Maui doll was hidden. And then you walk through a small little hallway with a bathroom and closet. Then you go into the second room with the toys and stuff. They're both connected but have different light systems. The lights turned off and on automatically due to any movements. She started getting really tired and cranky. She's only two at this time, by the way, so we went into the second room and sat down on a chair watching YouTube videos till her dad was finished. I had this clear view of the first room because we were sitting across from the hallway. The light in that room turned off due to no motion being in it. Eventually, it's 8.40, so I get up to start cleaning up before we leave. I walk into the other room and nearly shit my pants. The mummy doll is sitting on the fucking kid table facing the hallway. Almost like it was looking at us the whole time. Mind you, if anyone had moved that doll, I would have seen them and the light would have turned on. I had a clear view of that room and as soon as I saw the doll on the table, she started bloody murder even louder than before when she saw it. Needless to say, I didn't even bother cleaning up. I grabbed our stuff, ran out of there, we waited for her dad up front, and I had the maintenance guys grab the doll and throw it away from me. I was so creeped out, even though everyone insists someone must have been pulling a prank on me. I don't buy it at all. I had a clear view of that room. The light would have turned on at any movement. It just doesn't make sense to me at all. If the doll is haunted, how did it move across the room onto the table directly across from me? without turning on the light. The next day I worked the morning shift. I looked for that bathroom key once again for the guy who was working that afternoon and had no luck. Mid-shift I started making a membership. I looked down and the key is right next to my computer mouse. I was still shaken up from the night before so I freaked out. That was about a year ago and nothing major has happened since besides me freaking myself out by seeing shadows in the glass reflection early in the morning when I'm alone in the building. You know, little things like that. Literally nobody believes me about the doll, and it makes me so mad. This was started shortly after all that stuff was happening with my sister, so it was really creepy. Anyway, thanks for reading. 2. When I was young, I'm talking about three or four years old, I moved to a newly built house in Baytown, Texas, and there wasn't anything creepy or weird about it until a few months later. I vividly remember this. I had a chalkboard in my room, it was centered right in the middle of my room, and one night, I was laying in bed and I kept glancing over at the eraser on the chalkboard, and it was sitting straight up, so I walked over and set it down and got back in bed. Well, when I looked again, it was standing straight up. I went to place it back down, and it happened again. I cried for my mom, I can't remember if I told her or not what happened. The next thing I remember is waking up downstairs. I don't sleepwalk, I've never sleepwalked in my life. But I woke up downstairs and of course, I was confused as hell. I ran back upstairs and I keep hearing someone running behind me up the stairs. I wasn't dreaming, I was awake. Some years later in my teenage years, I told my mom about this and she told me I was talking to someone. I was holding someone's hand and talking to someone downstairs. I do not remember that. The next thing is something that I probably will never be able to explain. I did tell my mom about this and she didn't believe me, even though she does believe in spirits. It was raining outside, a really bad thunderstorm, and I was afraid of thunder. I love it now as an adult. I ducked my head under the covers and I remember getting slapped. The slap hurt, it even made a sound, but I think I was so scared I actually passed out. I can never explain that. 
There was no one in my room. I would have heard the door open and my parents wouldn't slap me over being scared. The other things are minor, but in this house I would have the vividest dreams. There's one dream in particular I remember. And I woke up in the house and went to my dad's office to find two or three, can't remember, gravestones in his office. They didn't have names and shortly after I woke up. The other dream I had was that I was in my room, but I was talking to this massive black shadow with a deep voice, and it yelled at me and I woke up in a sweat. The last thing I can remember is I used to have this pencil-looking bag holder, again I was young, and I swore that thing used to move. I was always so scared of it. We put it outside, and I remember hearing scraping on the carpet outside my room, and I would go outside and check, and I could see marks on the carpet. Oh, I also remember my closet door used to open by itself. It was a slide closet that opened by itself a few times. When I was young, maybe five, I told my grandma about some of the stuff that happened, and she took me to go see a priest and get blessed. Unsure if they worked because on and off I've been experiencing weird things, even when we moved out of that house and into a different house. But a lot of it stopped. It honestly feels good telling anyone about this. Maybe one day I can tell my parents about this or my mother. My dad would never believe me. 3. This all started in December 2018. My daughter, who was four and a half at the time, wanted this doll for Christmas and it was sold out. So we bought one only second hand and it was like brand new. The doll looked like your average baby doll. Plastic, movable arms, legs, brown hair, and brown eyes that opened and closed with a big head. Typical little girl's doll. She was so excited on Christmas Day since it was one of the things on the top of the list. Everything was good for the first week to two weeks. Then little things started to happen. First she started to take things and either ruin or hide things. She never had a reason why she took things and ruined them until later. I got annoyed with it but shrugged it off as a kid thing. Then she started waking up in the middle of the night at 2am, 3am... At odd times in between, I would want to sleep with us. This went on for a few weeks. Then she started saying weird things. She would tell us that the little girl was waking her up at 3am or 3.15am. Now mind you, she was almost five, but didn't have a clock in her room, and also couldn't tell time. We shrugged this off as maybe she saw something on TV. She then started talking to us about how the man in her room wants to take her to the cloud and how he makes her not feel good. This is when I started asking her questions. She said the little girl who came in her room always woke her up to play in the middle of the night, and this little girl would tell her to do bad things so she could be a bad girl. I asked her about the man, and she said the man scares her, but the little girl was her friend. She said the man told her he wanted to take her up in the clouds to be with him and the little girl where they belong and that he was the one who makes the dolls. She told us about a dream she had, where the little girl took her hand and lifted her to show her where she lived, and where they were flying, and she said she got scared and wanted to come home, and the little girl got upset with her. She would wake up with belly aches, and at one point she said her lamp was making her dizzy and nauseous because the man was making it spin when she looked at it. She would always reference this doll when talking about it, saying they always played with the doll with her. After about two months of countless sleepless nights, nightmares, and a complete change in my daughter, one night her dad was in her room playing with her. He said the doll just looked creepy. He doesn't believe in any of this. So he took the doll and moved it. My daughter then hollered and said, No, you can't be mean to her. You have to be nice. She'll get mad at you. He said, well, no, it's just the doll. It won't do anything. She told him, yes, it will. She tells me to do bad things. I don't want her to be mad at me anymore. He then took the doll again and said, no, you don't listen to the doll. You only listen to me and mommy. Now he said after he moved the doll, he got a very bad feeling and an uneasy feeling. And the way the doll was positioned, it was just looking at him. 
We talked that night and decided to get rid of it. I took it from her house to my parents' community and tossed it in a dumpster. Oddly enough, after it was gone, things were fine. My daughter started sleeping again, hasn't spoken about being woken up. She did tell us her room was haunted about six months later, after she said she saw a lady in her window. I have a video of her screaming bloody murder after seeing it. We have since moved her bedroom into another room of the house, and nothing else has happened since. It was honestly the weirdest two or three months of our life. There were other little things that happened in that time, such as things moving, and I would feel uneasy like someone was looking at me at times. We even had a house guest who slept in her room one night, and the next day she told us she would never sleep in there again, that it was really creepy. She couldn't explain why, she just didn't sleep well, and it felt like someone was there. We never told her about what was happening. 4. My cousin was getting married in Augusta, Georgia last June. My boyfriend and I live in Baton Rouge, and were going to be staying at his grandparents' lodge that was empty, so we didn't overcrowd my family's houses. The lodge sits on about 15 acres in the middle of Augusta. It's busy all around because of where the house sits. It feels like you're in the middle of nowhere. You don't hear anything from the surrounding areas except for animals. Now keep in mind we had stayed here plenty of times before. When we got there, we had to manually turn on the water and electricity. The water is out by the road, but the electricity is in the basement. The basement looks like it came straight out of The Conjuring. All dusty and full of crap that hasn't been touched in years. The walls are gross and paint on the stairs has chipped away over the years. The only light in the basement are these tiny long windows at the top of the wall, and they have a frosted overlook, so not much light gets through. Anyway... We get everything turned on and get unpacked. We always stayed in the front bedroom because we were uncomfortable staying in the back. According to my boyfriend's family, a family friend has been staying there and killed himself in the back bedroom. A door in the kitchen separates the front of the house from the back hallway with the basement, laundry, master bed, and bathroom. So I never really got freaked out because it felt like a whole different house. The next few days came and went with everything feeling cozy and normal. The night of the wedding, my brother and his girlfriend came by to get ready. Since there were so many of us, we used the back room because the bathroom is huge. Before we left for the wedding, we packed everything up and moved it into the front because we would be going to stay with some of my other family. We didn't turn off the water and power yet because we had food in the fridge and didn't want it to melt in the heat of a Georgian night packing up the car. It was well past dark when we got back. We started packing everything up and once we got everything out, we had to go to the creepy basement to turn the power off. I had a weird feeling when we walked to the back of the house, through the door, and to the basement so it didn't go further than halfway down the stairs. The only light we had was the flashlights in our phones. Out of nowhere, this feeling of complete dread washed over me. Every hair in my body was standing straight up. I was sick to my stomach and started sweating. Imagine the most terrified you've ever been, and it is probably close to this feeling. All I could think was I have to get out of here now. I yelled to my boyfriend that we had to go now. He didn't say a thing, but hurried back up for us to leave. Going back up the stairs, I swear it felt like something brushed my ankle. As I backed out my jeep, I just knew something was staring at me. I knew at any moment something or someone would pop up in the reverse lights. Thankfully, nothing did. After we were a few miles away, my boyfriend asked me what was wrong. As I told him, he stopped me and said, Thank God you felt that too. He goes on to tell me that almost every night we were there, he would get woken up by a loud scream. It would sound farther off and then get so close he said it sounded like someone was in his ear. He and his family are sensitive to spirits, so it didn't scare him too much. But he said he had never felt the evil he did right before we left. I don't know what or who that feeling was, but I just hope I never feel it again. 5. Characters involved. S1, Sister 1, 12 years. S2, Sister 2, 11 years. Our dad, 
our puppy. Let me just start off by saying I am the oldest sibling in the house as of now, as our oldest sister is off in college. So about one and a half months ago, we moved into our new house. Quite big, I might add, and we were all very excited hearing the news. It took us about 35 to 40 days to start getting everything together, and the rest of the time was spent on renovations. Incident 1. Since it's summer, our father and stepmom still head out to work on the weekdays, and as soon as he arrives home, my dad will continue working on sections of the house, such as the kitchen and upstairs. So we'll technically be alone in the house from 9am to 3pm. My stepmother arrives at 3. Everything's been going well until not too long ago, when we started to notice little things, such as noises around the house, and some things misplaced but nothing major, until one night S1, S2 and I, along with my puppy, were downstairs alone. My sisters clearly remember our father going upstairs after working on something in the garage, and leaving the door that leads to the garage open, so we all just chill into our thing. About five minutes later, we hear a door slam and we all jolt, including my puppy, who seemed to be on high alert. What was that? Sister 1 says. I don't know, but it sounded like the, said Sister 2. Garage door, I say. Dad just went upstairs, says Sister 2. We all went silent for a few seconds, and then I decided to go check it out. Both my sisters following along and our puppy behind us, since he loves to follow us around. I immediately knew something was off, when as soon as we got to the hallway of the door, our puppy whimpered and ran off, tugging at my foot. I felt a sense of rush overwhelm me, because this has happened before in many other stories like this. I stepped forward down the hall and noticed that the door was closed. Sister One said Dad didn't leave that open. Are you sure you saw him go up the stairs, I ask? They both answered yes. We then all got creeped out and ran from that hallway as our puppy had been trying to get us to do for the past two minutes. Our dad came downstairs about ten minutes later, as we all sat there trying to figure out what just happened. Dad, weren't you upstairs right now? Sister One says. Yes, why? We all just heard the garage door slam shut. He stood in silence, as it seems he wasn't really interested in what we were telling him, and proceeded with what he was doing. None of us talked about that night for a while afterwards. Incident 2. I went outside to walk my dog a few days ago around 1.30pm. Our back door leads to our porch, enclosed with a mesh, and on your left and right, once you step foot outside, are doors that actually lead to the outside. I always leave through the left door, as the right isn't working and our door has a spring that automatically closes the door. But I close it regularly anyway, just to make sure. I explicitly remember hearing the loud noise of the door closing. I then turned around to let my dog do his thing. Then here's where I get concerned. I hear a faint click and turn around to see the door opened. I got weirded out a bit and went back to close it, and then it happened again a few days later. Incident 3. This one happened today, just an hour ago we were washing dishes. Sister 1 and I. The appliances in our house are a bit high tech, so our sink is sensor activated. As long as the handle is pulled out, if you touch the base of the sink, a blue light turns on and the water flows. So we were close to finishing the dishes, and S1 was rinsing when suddenly the sink just turns off completely. I started freaking out a bit because none of us had touched the sink at all. The handle was still out, so the only way it could turn off was the sensor. All power was still on in the house, so that's when I started to get concerned and made this post. I'm still a bit shaken, as other things have occurred such as appliances going off randomly. Even the dishwasher randomly started playing a melody. The one that plays when it's finished with the cycle, but no one ever turned it on. Our house has been blessed already, but this still goes on, and I'm not sure what to do. Update. I literally have no explanation for this. Yesterday I was sitting by my dog's cage, just petting and playing with him for a few minutes, before heading back upstairs as it was just past 10pm. 
other siblings had to go to bed. And just when I was about to put him in his cage, I hear three faint taps on the porch glass, as if someone was on the other side. I'm still freaked out by this one, and rushed upstairs afterwards. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to 5 True Paranormal Stories, episode 196. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Let me just give a quick check here, see if there's... Uh, nope, no shoutouts for this video, just making sure. Uh, where is this now? This goes up on Friday, doesn't it? Uh, well, my plans for the week are to... I'm trying to get into the habit. Every now and again, I like to shake up how I work. Uh, sometimes that means I'll edit in a different order than I usually do. Sometimes I'll record a video, edit. Sometimes I'll record all my audio. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm shifting all the actual work part, the recording, the making videos, when I can. So far, it's going well. Into the first part of the week. Then that leaves the rest of the week for the administrative stuff. Any errands that, well, when the world's a bit more normal, any errands that I have to do. I mean, apparently there is mandatory to wear a mask in Scottish shops now. Uh, we'll see if they enforce it. I mean, Scottish people are usually sensible, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, I know they're not all sensible. I should probably edit that part out. The really stupid ones will think I'm talking about them. And only the really stupid ones would actually tell me they think I'm talking about them. Anyway... Uh, so yeah, there's that. Uh, ordinarily, I could go, go about and do errands and things. Uh, and I also... Well, there's some other little projects I want to work on, so hopefully that'll help with that. Okay, and with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourself.